All right, this is Brian with Go Hunt. I'm here with Dan Ducey from Lakey, and uh, he's gonna go over a lot of cool stuff with us today. We love Lakey trekking poles. A lot of us in the office use them, been using them for years, and we are super pumped to have Dan here to share some information with us. Thank you, Brian. You know, the key is when you're out hunting and the benefit of using a pair of poles um, instead of just a single staff is, you know, sure, a single staff is great, um, it is going to um, take some load off your knees and lower back. But when you switch hands, you're tweaking your spine one side or the other. Um, and that's, you know, you're getting the support. But a pair of poles is key um, because you're maintaining your body's perfect design, which is symmetry. To some degree, if you have 40, 50, 60 or more pounds of meat on your back that you're packing back to your truck, just the basic act of putting your arms forward improves your posture slightly, um, especially if you're climbing out of some canyon. If you're ascending, um, you have to lean into the, into the hillside to move upward. So just by having your arms forward, it can slightly improve your posture on the trail. The key with a pair of poles is it's like having four wheel drive for your body. Another advantage uh, that other basic hikers uh, don't quite realize. I know many of us here are using low cut like approach shoes or flip flops. If you're hiking with a low cut shoe and begin to fold an ankle, right? If you're using the straps correctly, you're more likely to load your poles with your body weight instead of loading your ankle with that body weight and folding your ankle over. The other aspect that I find is because I'm more confident that I'm not gonna fold an ankle, I'm more likely to be enjoying the scenery or looking out on the horizon instead of focused on every little foot placement along the trail. Right. It gives you, poles give you a tremendous amount of confidence when you're out uh, walking on um, on foot. There's a university study that was done about 20 years ago at the University of Colorado. They had about 25 participants that took a hike. Each had a pair of poles and they concluded that over your average eight hour hike, when you use poles, you can eliminate up to 250 tons of accumulated stress from your knees and lower back. Wow. And as everyone here knows, that mostly occurs when you're descending, right? When you lengthen the poles out, you reach down the trail, you slow yourself down and reduce that jarring from your knees and lower back. So that's significant. And if you average that out over every step taken during that eight, eight hour period, it amounts to a three to 5% heel strike reduction with the use of a pair of poles. So that'll help you stay out there longer, have to be a little bit happier, just like reduce some stress in your body. Yeah, and the one thing, especially the hunter who is not on a, a trail that has been created by National Park Service, all hunters are off, off trail. You know, they're in really rugged terrain. You're uh, like worst case scenario pole user or probably the individual that needs poles the most. You know, with, with every step, right especially at the end of the day if you work on your feet all day you're stepping around and you're working your core um, but think about having 60 70 pounds of meat on your back at the end of the day if you can stabilize your upper body with the poles you have in your hand you're not overworking your core muscles sure and the perception is is that you're not using as much energy when you're traveling through um, you know, your hunting grounds. The second part here is how in the world do we use poles? Is there, do we, you know, out like this? Do we double pole? Um, the fact that you just have poles in your hands is correct. That is the start. So the biggest mistake that people make, I see this in television commercials. I see it in images and ads from Backpacker Magazine, and it's just photo shoots. It's, it's television commercial shoots, and they don't actually own the poles. They're using them for a photo shoot, and they wanna be able to return the poles brand new and get their money back after the photo shoot's over. So the biggest mistake people do is they immediately dive down through the top. So this is, this is wrong, right? 
What you want to do when Lakey puts a half twist in the strap, go up through the bottom, let the, let the strap or sling come between your hand and the grip. And this happens to be just about the perfect length for me. So the beauty of this is now I don't even have to grip the pole to benefit from the support that the strap provides. Um, and of course, Lakey puts a half twist in the strap when it's um, sent through the top of the grip so that there's no fold over my skin. When I have 80 pounds on my back, it probably won't happen anytime soon, but when I get fatigued at the end of the day, after a long hike, if I slip on a slope, and I may, even with poles, now if I stumble, I can let go of the strap and catch myself, sure. okay? So back to that, that incorrect way of doing it. If I do this, right, um, what's gonna happen is at that proper strap, strap length before, now it's too long. And so now my hand is coming in contact with this ducktail at the bottom of the, of the grip. So yeah. what does the consumer do mistakenly? They leave it like this. Tighten it up. They tighten it up. And then, then there's like problems. Then there's like worst case scenario. Or let me just show you what, what else they do. They're almost, they've almost got it right. They're almost halfway there but then they do this and that's really bad. So the problem here is if I stumble now, and I don't know if you can get this, this is likely to roll across my thumb and I could injure my thumb that way. And all, this, all the lakey pole grips, if you pull up on this and then lengthen by pulling the middle portion or shorten by pulling the tail, um, you can easily, quickly and easily adjust your pull straps. Um, but again, go up through the bottom and down and let the strap operate like a sling. And you will be amazed how much these straps support your hand and wrist and how little energy you have to spend putting the death grip on the pole. So yeah. hang in your straps, hang in the sling, hang in the sling that it is. And then when you need a glass, you, it looks like with that way, you can just let them hang and, and do your binos. Typically, I don't put the strap on because I'm always have to do my binos and then I put my my trekking poles lean them on me and while I'm glassing they always always fall over and I have to go grab them so if I was to do it the right way I'm gonna be able to glass and do everything I need to. As far as the um, length adjustment goes the way to think about um, think about not not so much your elbow but think about your forearm when you use poles you want your forearm level or just slightly shorter than that just slightly below level at all times so the beauty of an adjustable pole is you can maintain that position no matter what terrain you're on going up the steepest slope off trail or downhill the most radical descent you lengthen the pole out so you can reach down the trail slow yourself down um, and take that jarring uh, at least most of it off your knees and lower back so um, and what we suggest is a 50-50 adjustment. You'll find that the shafts have these increments in centimeters, and I am maybe just over five foot eight, so I'm gonna set the lower section at 115 and the upper section at 115. And you know, I could probably tighten this a little bit. I wanna feel some resistance. I don't want this to be really soft and easy. Um, I want to feel some resistance, so I'm just tightening the round nut here on this device, which is called Speedlock Plus, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, so a 50-50 adjustment at, at 115, and you can see from the profile shot, that's a really good length to maintain at all times. So when you go up, do you shorten them so it's exactly. a little bit easier? So if, say, you know, my reference point is trail hiking, so if I were at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, Phantom Ranch and heading out from this position I would shorten my poles maybe anywhere from one to three inches depending on how radical that ascent is um, if I find myself enjoying the scenery too much and neglecting the length of my poles I might find myself hiking like this and then look yeah. and yeah that's way too long stop yeah. for a second readjust your poles so you're right in there at that that level or slightly below level position yep. and you'll need to like reach up the trail if you reach a point where there are steps on the trail um, so you know 
that's the beauty of an adjustable pole is just maintaining that horn position. When I go to descend, I like to just kind of palm the top. And that's the thing I love about Lakey's design is just it's ergonomic. It feels good. I can put my hand right on top. I can put two fingers on top or or whatever, just kind of whatever's most comfortable. Um, and you have this this ducktail or beaver tail, whatever you want to call that on the bottom, kind of supports the, the bottom of your palm. It's just super comfortable. One last thing, um, not so much what you should do, but what you should not do. Um, keep your baskets on. Do not remove these. Um, you might think that by removing them, you're going to be extra lightweight. You're going to reduce the load. These baskets, even though they're smaller, they really serve a purpose and they serve the purpose of preventing you from breaking a pole section. Maybe not so much in the desert southwest where there's a lot of sandstone, but in the high backcountry, um, especially above the timberline when you're traveling across granite slabs and um, through areas of granite, stream crossings, pretty critical. So the basket, yeah. you know, like you would for for skiing, you know, if you didn't have a basket on, you would plant your pole without a basket to here, and you'd ski past it within the first five seconds, and you'd probably leverage or break the pole in the snow. Of course, it doesn't happen as often out um, on the dirt, out on terrain, but the basket is designed to prevent you from sinking the pole beyond that point, and, you know, you will jam it into a crack on the trail that you will not see and because you're properly strapped into these and if you've got that load on your back and you're descending you can't stop on a dime and it's going to pull your arm back you're going to feel like a knucklehead but with the basket on the, the goal is to bend and break the carbide flex tip this is a sacrificial part it's designed to bend and break to take leverage off of the pull shafts all right so keep your baskets on, and if you're in terrain that is super rugged, you might even consider a larger basket to help preserve your, your pole shaft. So that really concludes the end um, of the how-to portion of this clinic. Um, so thanks for watching and listening. <laughs>